what was your first impression when you meet Rod Smallwood for the first time? Rod Smallwood. Rod Smallwood is the uh, is still the the manager of Iron Maiden. Has a fearsome reputation. Um, uh, I mean, it, I, I have to say, nowadays he's calmed down a little bit. I mean, he's nearly <laughs> seventy. Um, but I think that's more because of fear of political correctness and things like that, in that he can't actually hit people over the head in business meetings with his knuckles anymore. Um, uh, so record company executives used to live in fear of, of, of him leaning across the, the, the uh, you know, a boardroom table and him striking them on the top of the head with his knuckles going, fucking shut up, you're stupid. Uh, and they'd be like, what? Like that. And this is in front of the rest of the board or something. So he was pretty fearless and, and people were quite frightened of him. Um, and it was all about, he was all about commitment to Iron Maiden. His life's work has been Iron Maiden. He did architecture at Cambridge, uh, dropped out in year two, became an agent um, uh, in the in MAM agency, did all that got fed up with the world of rock and roll because he thought most rock and roll musicians were complete wasters, unreliable, um, not very honorable people, and was going, was going to go into the sandwich business. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then he got sent a demo tape of Iron Maiden from a buddy of his who he played rugby with. He was a very keen rugby player. Um, and he went, this is kind of cool. So he went to see Iron Maiden. I'm getting to answer your, your question. No, I, I'm perfect. painting a picture here so you get the idea. Um, so he went to see Iron Maiden, which was a, uh, a, a five-piece band. Uh, only on this occasion, it was only a three-piece band. The singer had been arrested outside the venue for carrying an offensive weapon, and one of the guitarists had been fired by the bass player the previous week. So they went on as a three-piece with about five people watching them. And he saw the show, as much of a show as it could be. He saw the show, and it was the attitude that got him. Because, and he said, he said, okay, he said, deal, done. I want to be a manager, I'll get you a record deal, we're going to be huge. And uh, they were, obviously, ways down the line. In the, I was with a band called Samson. We were all contemporaries. We all hung out together. So we all knew each other. We were all in the same circuit and everything. Um, but um, in the, they did get another guitar player and the singer, they got him out of jail. And uh, the, they did two albums, both of which were uh, top 10 albums uh, immediately. The band were already a big band when I was headhunted to join them. And the headhunting process took place where um, uh, I'd just done a performance at Reading Festival with um, uh, my band Samson, which was slowly kind of falling apart. Um, uh, but, you know, my star was shining relatively brightly and I had record labels coming up and asking if I wanted to be a solo artist and things, which I thought, well, I'm you know, 20 years old, I really don't want to be a solo artist, I want to play in a band, you know, so, you know, it's a bit premature, thank you very much. Um, and then after the show, uh, Rod came up and thought he would have a little secret surreptitious meeting with me. So in the backstage area of Reading Festival, there's about 2000 people, all getting drunk and yahooing and everything. Uh, he decided to have a, 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 a secret tete-a-tete -tete with me under a bright arc light in the middle uh, of uh, the field in plain view of everybody uh, surrounded by a big tent pole. Um, so everybody was like, oh, look, it's him talking to him. We then retired to Rod's room, which is not a Harvey Weinstein moment. I <laughs> um, and uh, so we, we, we retired to Rod's room and he said, he said, I'm offering you the chance to audition for Iron Maiden. And um, I was kind of precocious at the time. And I said, don't bullshit me. I said, you're offering me the job. Because otherwise you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here. The question is, do you actually want me? 
I said, because I know you're current singer, so I'm not good at filling dead men's shoes. Presumably, you're going to get rid of this guy, but I'm not going to join before you've got rid of him. Secondly, when I do join, I'm going to be a pain in the ass, but for all the right reasons. I'm going to be completely different, and I'm going to have opinions. If you don't want that, tell me now, and I'll walk out. And he went, oh, all right. <laughs> and that's how our relationship started. And we've gone head to head with each other numerously, including wrestling on the floor of tour buses on the way to a gig in Poland. Um, you know, after he tried to hit me on the top of the head with his knuckles, and I went, you're not doing that, buddy. Um, <laughs> so we ended up wrestling on the floor for about 10 minutes. Uh, and, and we get, both gave up in the end and went, okay, truce. 